The power is in whose hand? The people's hand. It's not in the politicians' hand. It should have been. The president sort of said that on the night of his, on the night of the Democratic convention, the language he used was citizen participation. <coughs> He used citizen participation. That's what he said on the night. And he sort of said it the other day when they were talking about, when they were talking about this fiscal crisp, crisp, and he had those people behind him. What I think he's now starting to realize is although you're on the end, you're not really on the end. And only through power of people will you effectuate this process. Because what happens is, I don't care whoever gets in power, they sometimes forget why they're in the position they're in. So when Dr. Sade talked about the international aspect, and I said earlier to you that they never talked about Africa, they never talked about South America, but why? Because a constituency <coughs> has to be a voice and rise to drive the nature of the policy. Let me tell you something. No politician ever wants to give up their job. Let's be clear about it. No politician ever wants to give up their job. But you can effectuate that. You can effectuate that behavior. So poverty, international, all those elements, and I agree with what Michael said about using the leverage of the force to drive the behavior. Because until you do that, you never want to drive it. And I agree, we have gone to third parties, right? We have tried a hard right? But you don't, you don't need that. You need the tool when you describe it. Thank you so much. Let me just uh, join in with what Reverend Evan said. First of all, before I answer the question, I'm shocked in a pleasant way that you have packed this place where it's standing yes, alone. Yes, that's true. We have very, very important. Um, now, getting to the answer to the question, what am I disappointed in? I'm disappointed that President Barack Obama wasn't perfect enough to force black people to get up off their asses and do what they're supposed to do. That's my first disappointment. And I say that sarcastically because just like the representative said, and just like I mentioned earlier on, we have to be the force. Are we saying that President Barack Obama should sit there by the phone in the White House waiting for black people to call him up and say, hey, fix my toilet or the bus is not running right? Of course not. There needs to be an organized effort. And as long as there's no organized effort for change, then we can't blame the president because the president is a politician and politicians follow what the masses tell them. The Black Panther Party in the genius talked about, as the representative said, power to the people. But if you think about it, an even better phrase is, instead of power to the people, it's power from the people. That's the real quote, power from the people. Now, assuming that is true, and it certainly is, then the people have to force the leaders to do what they're supposed to do. So my first disappointment is not so much with the president as it is with the people who didn't force this politician to do what needed to be done. I mentioned earlier the Tea Party. The Tea Party, a small minority, a very small, was able to organize enough to force the Republican Party to do its bidding. Having said that, first disappointment of the people. Now, I actually came here with my list of disappointments of the president. <laughs> but I, I'm not going to go through that list, but I will say one of the, about six or seven of them, just quickly, the whole corporate control of politics. President Barack Obama got as much from the top 20 individual contributors that Romney did. The people like, wow. You tell me that major corporate heads are giving Romney and Obama the same thing that have this problem. Why is that? Exactly. That's exactly it. And you know when people pay me the money, you got to do the dance. So that was one disappointment. Another disappointment is his foreign policy. And Dr. Santi touched on that, specifically regarding the Sudan and Israel. You would think that the United States is a part of Israel in terms of how they push it. And I'm not blaming Israel because of Israel. I'm blaming Israel the same way I blame the South African government. Because whether you like it or not, Zionism is apartheid. And this is not me saying it. There are Jewish members of the Israeli Knesset who say the same thing. So it's not just Michael Kors talking. So when you talk about the foreign policy, I'm disappointed there. Uh, his view on the death penalty. 
I'm disappointed there. His view on cracking down on marijuana, I'm disappointed there. Um, offshore drilling, I'm disappointed there. Let me just write off a few others. Deportation. For President Barack Obama deported more people than any president in the history of the United States of America. And people are shocked here. In fact, in 2011, he broke his own 2010 record. So I got a problem with that. Also, there's something called the whistleblower law. Whistleblower law means if you're a federal employee and you find about federal what waste of fraud or criminality and you report it, you're supposed to be a hero. Well, President Barack Obama has prosecuted more whistleblowers than any other president in history. There's a former National Security Agency executive who's also a heroic war vet, a member of the Navy and the uh, Air Force. He then joined the National Security Administration, and he found out about this thing that involved called the Trailblazer Program. The Trailblazer Program was the federal government's illegal method of intercepting your internet and cell phone communication. And he said, hey, you know, I'm a patriotic American, but this stuff ain't right. And he exposed it to the media. Barack Obama sent the Justice Department to go after him. And that's a member of the National Security Agency and a military veteran. There's also a CIA agent who exposed what was going on with waterboarding. President Barack Obama went after him. And I was, initially, during the first term, the president of the Barack Obama fan club. That was me. I was the president of the But when these facts came out, I just couldn't deny the truth. I had to admit that it wasn't what I had hoped it would be. So we got those issues, corporations, we got um, foreign um, policy, we got, um, as Dr. Sante said, assassinating heads of state and doing it unilaterally. But I think one of the biggest things for me, especially as an attorney, is when he signed the National Defense Authorization Act. That's a complicated and complex thing, but let me just say this. It allows the federal government, for the first time in American history, to go to foreign soil and kill American citizens. That has never happened before. If you think the Patriot Act was a violation of the U.S. Constitution, the National Defense Authorization Act was even worse. So you see all those things? So I actually write a column each week for Going Up Magazine, and I listed all these things. But at the end, I pointed out that as bad as these things are, Romney would be a million <laughs> times worse. <laughs> so if you wow. think wow. that Obama was bad, he was worse. Then look at some things that President Obama did that I not only was not disappointed with, but was impressed with. He gave the farmer, you know, black farmer, yeah, 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 yeah. $1.5 billion. Nobody else would have done that. He increased funding to historically black college universities. He signed the hate crime bill. He supports affirmative action. I mean, if you go down the list of so many things he's done, increased funding for Pell Grants, uh, signed the Lilly Ledbetter Act, which is to say to give women the same amount of pay as men did. He supports minimum wage for federal employees. Um, so if there are five things that I'm disappointed with with Barack Obama, there's 500 things I'm disappointed with when it comes to um, Mitt Romney. And clearly, one of them was going to be president. So I have to decide which one, the five problem guy or the 500 problem guy. So that's what it comes down to. And finally, the final point I want to make is that when you talk about these disappointments, they're real, but the, we should look in the mirror when we talk about those. We have to ask ourselves, all the issues that you support, whether it's the ends of death penalty, whether it's stop funding of um, Zionism, um, whether it's um, the marijuana laws, anything you can think of, ask yourself, what did you do in writing to your city council person, in writing to your state rep? in writing to your state senator, your congressperson, or the president, what organization did you join? What rally did you go to? What demonstration were you involved in? What petition did you sign? And if you haven't done it, then you are what I call, and I put this in the article, these armchair aren't anarchists. You know, they sit back all day long and tell you, these reclining, recliner relaxing revolutionaries. They sit like these radio radicals. They'll call up all these shows and sound like Malcolm X, and Pat Brown, and Abu Jamal, all wrapped in blood, but they haven't done anything. <laughs> As a person of public office, I wish I had everybody like Michael Jordan. <laughs> no, no, on a serious note, because one of the things I think we lack, one of the things I think we lack, 
Dr. Sarpy is providing a gear service. Yeah. Um,